Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky, and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, my loves, welcome back. Here we are doing the middle of the month love readings. This is going to be for all zodiac signs. If you guys are interested in any personal consultations or any type of uh, personal spell work, you can find all of that on the description box link below. As well as if you guys are interested in any of our journals or any of our um, manifestation book journals or shadow work, you will find all of that on the descriptions box below. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty. Happy Hallow's Eve for those of you guys that do celebrate. If you do, comment below and let me know what is it that you or your family partake in these celebrations. As you guys do know, if you've been following me for a while, we're pretty big on that on this side. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kickoff season of all the holidays, right? So I want to wish all of you guys the very best. Obviously, stay safe and enjoy. All right, let's get into the readings. This is, uh, we're going to begin here with Libra as it is still Libra season. Let's see what's going on with you guys in regards to love and romance. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys have been following me for a very long time, you guys know we have here Jack, very present, very present. <laughs> this goes way back, so if you're a new follower, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But anyways, moving on, let's get into it. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What is going on with their situation here? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What's going on with Libra and their partner or person? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys follow me on other social medias, I highly encourage you guys to follow me on Instagram as well as on Snapchat as I'm very proactive on there. And I try the best I can to respond to all of you guys' comments and questions. So, all right, well, let's begin, Libra. So <clears throat> situation here is the Ten of Wands. Your thoughts and feelings is the Three of Cups. Your other person's thoughts and feelings, Page of Swords action that needs to be taken six of swords and the outcome all right so <laughs> libra what i'm seeing here for you guys is currently you've been dealing with the situation that perhaps is become very burdensome for some of you guys um could be the struggles of everyday life that is currently affecting the relationship or this connection however i am being shown that I feel like both of you guys are seeing, you're seeing this connection or this relationship, like it's become a little bit more work than actually enjoying each other's company. Now, when we talk about how you're seeing the situation with the Three of Cups, you're wanting it to be more playful energy. You're wanting it, for some of you guys, it's that you're just seeking and wanting some type of freedom, right? You're wanting and desiring um a little more liveliness in this connection. I see your person really attentively watching you or looking at you. For some of you guys, those of you guys that are in no connection, meaning there's no communication at the moment, I do feel that there is a constant like stress that you guys are dealing with, and this is both of you guys. It's like you guys don't know how to deal with the situation or you guys don't know how to approach one another. Um, with the three of cups for some of you guys, you could already be entertaining another person or perhaps, like I said, seeking the freedom, right? The freedom to want to find your own, find what makes you happy. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, this is something that you guys have been pushed to do for quite a while, uh, since we've had the South node in your sign Libra. So it's about learning to learning to bring into balance the understanding, okay, is the person that you're dealing with or the person that you're trying to build a relationship with, are they bringing to you happiness and fulfillment? Or do you often find yourself being the one to constantly sacrifice until it becomes no longer fun? And then you're wondering or questioning, is it even worth it? And I see that you guys are at that point or will be at that point. Now, your partner is very observant. I see them watching you. If there's no communication right now, I do see them watching you or stalking you through social media. Um, but the advice position here with the Six of Swords, it's time to move on, Libra. And again, especially those of you guys, if you recently started dealing with someone new, I feel like this is the universe pushing you and telling you, like, you've 
done your part and this connection has got to the point of understanding that it's more like effort and stress that you're the one that's putting into it that it's not worth it anymore it's not making sense to you anymore libra so i see you guys by the end of this month i see you guys choosing yourselves i see you guys choosing your sanity more than anything you're choosing the balance to your emotional needs and i see you guys moving away from the situation no longer looking back and the moment you're willing to embrace that the the outcome for you guys is going to be not only a lot of expansion a lot of growth fast momentum but you're also what i'm hearing is for some of you guys if and this is only going to connect with a few but since you started dealing with this person if you've noticed that somehow some way it affects your finances the moment you pull away from this person you're going to see a lot of expansion and a lot of growth happen and i want you if you are connecting with that message i want you to take that as validation that the universe is telling you you've outgrown this situation and you need to move on libra all right my loves all right wishing guys the very best let's go to scorpio let's see what's going on with scorpio and scorpio's person here Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Scorpios. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified if the most recent video is going up. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. By the way, how are you guys feeling with this massive full moon that we are experiencing in Aries? I don't know about you guys, but it's put me very aggressive, very temperamental. <laughs> calling people out on their bullshit it's like it's it's no fuckery zone right now <laughs> hope you guys are dealing with it much better i have a very strong aries placement uh in a very powerful house so i think that's why it's a uh, no fuckery for me right now like my patience is non-existent right now but anyways doing the best we can to deal with that right <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. What's going on with Scorpio and their person? A bit of hesitation going on there, Scorpio. I felt, I felt it. Okay, here we go, Scorpio. So the Knight of Wands is, you're going to start to see momentum start to pick up Scorpio in regards to this connection. I feel like there's someone that is, or has been, potentially holding back for a bit um and the reason i say that is when i get the night as a current situation it's like things start to pick up where there was a bit of resistance or perhaps a bit of obstacles or challenges that you guys were dealing with however in your position your thoughts and feelings you are emotionally invested in this connection you're really wanting something to come from this and though again with the knight of wands right at the center i feel like for some of you guys it felt a bit a bit of resistance or like things weren't really picking up much of a pace. I feel like that's not going to be the case for you guys anymore, Scorpio. Why do we say this? Because your person's feelings and thoughts is the death card. So the death card does symbolize wanting to, they're, they're wanting to, to, to connect with this connection or with this relationship with you and take it to the next level. The death is always transformation. I don't see any other cards that would symbolize an ending. So it's more of taking or ending a cycle and taking it to the next level. And the reason I say that is because your advice is the six of wands. Know what your worth, know what your worth is, Scorpio. Know what you bring to the table. Understand that a lot of the direction of connections or and this is a concept that I've been telling a lot of my clients. Um, when you understand that in your reality, meaning your existence, your moment, your life, what you're experiencing right now, you are the main character. And the moment you realize that, you kind of take your power back and you also take or give people a position based on how they are acting or how they're carrying themselves. But you ultimately are the one that decides how you want them to show up in your life. So again, with the death card, I feel like this person has been perhaps in the past a bit hesitant about wanting to take things further or perhaps uh, bring some type of new beginning to this connection. But I feel like they're finally doing it at the end of this month. And with the six of wands, you're feeling very victorious. You're feeling like you're finally getting your wish fulfillment or you're finally experiencing 
some type of love offering, some type of, you know, uh, emotional depth to this connection, especially those of you guys that have been dealing with the situation where perhaps you felt uh, like this person wasn't making it very clear what it is that they were wanting or where they wanted to take this relationship. I feel like this month is a culmination, could be the full moon as well, that is bringing a culmination of almost kind of um, really having them analyze exactly what it is that they want and they're realizing that they want change they're realizing that they do want to take things further with you uh, with the six of wands here and the page of cups so don't be surprised scorpio if they uh you know officially want to make some type of status or they want to make it official some type of higher elevation of commitment uh, especially with the six of wands here and the page of cups uh, stay open to that okay and when i say stay open to that try the best you can to get out of your head especially if you're feeling a little bit frustrated i feel that's not going to be for long uh it's just something that sometimes we have to understand sometimes it takes people or i should say sometimes it takes other people a little bit longer uh to figure out that you're their person <laughs> you know what i mean like sometimes uh, the connection is felt much more stronger on one side mm -hmm. of the connection, but it doesn't mean that they don't feel that connection. It just means that sometimes they are not as evolved as you, Scorpio. So again, I feel like there is something, there's been a resistance that's been happening because I'm seeing almost like a tug of war. So I'm not sure if there was egos involved or something like that, or if this person was really a commitment foe. Mm -hmm. But again, I do see that... Um, basically taking ahead you know at the end of this month i see you guys having a conversation or seeing them uh do a complete turnaround a complete 180 where they come to you and they tell you okay uh, let's make it official or let's make it you know let's make it real or basically they're telling you where they're taking the relate where they want to take the relationship and i feel for some of you guys it's something you've been waiting for for quite a while scorpio all right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with them and their person, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with them. Sorry if you guys hear noise in the background. Sounds like they're moving furniture. All right, here we go. Sagittarius, let's see what's going on. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, mm -hmm. Venus. What the hell? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. All right, Sagittarius, we're starting off here with the Nine of Swords. A bit of anxiety, restlessness. I see you guys very much in your head right now, Sagittarius. Um, for some of you guys, there could have been an ending or some type of temporary uh, separation that's happening right now. I see you guys very much in your head, Sagittarius, and it has more to do with anxiety about the future. So what I mean by that is if you find yourself in this connection constantly or overly obsessing about where you want to take this relationship or where you want your partner to take this relationship, the reason why you're experiencing anxiety has a lot to do with, it has a lot to do with your traumas and i know that sounds really heavy um but it has to do with what you've experienced in the past so i really want to encourage you guys to really analyze your emotions whenever you feel like you're getting anxiety let's say because they're not texting you back as quickly as you would want or because it takes them a day to communicate with you um have you created clear boundaries? Have you expressed to them how you want to be communicated um, or how you expect them to communicate? I feel like you guys are kind of in the guessing game right now. Um, and this could have something to do. What I'm being shown is almost like there is a bit of feeling let down, but I feel like the letdown is not that they purposely did it. I feel like there were certain things that were not spoken or were not said and the reason i say that is again if there is a temporary separation or some type of um breakup that recently happened i do see them communicating i do see them coming back around however sagittarius 
I feel like a lot of a lot of your issues in this connection have a lot to do with things that go unsaid. And what I mean by that is you're feeling right now like you want to stand your ground, like you want to create some type of boundary, right? You want to speak up about something that you're not okay with or that you're not letting them fly with this shit no more. Um, they're seeing this connection as it's come to its conclusion. But with the 9 and 10, it's like there is an ending cycle to this connection, but there is a regeneration of this connection. So what I mean by that is, yes, there is an ending. And for some of you guys, you're already experiencing this. There is reconciliation. I do see this here. But what they're showing me here is you need to bring an end to some type of habit or some type of cycle in this connection. So what comes to mind is, as an example, if you guys have gone knowing each other for a while and you guys are still not official, but it's something that you're looking for. It's time you start to speak up, Sagittarius. It's time that you say, this is what I'm expecting and this is what I'm wanting. And if that's not what you're wanting, then you have to be okay with walking away with that or walking away from that Sagittarius. But there is definitely encouragement here of standing your ground and standing on your beliefs or on what you're wanting in order for the universe to give that to you. You have to be willing to give it to yourself first. And by doing that, or I should say by standing your ground and being even cutthroat on the things that you're expecting from this person is not only going to change the whole trajectory of this connection, but is also going to transform this connection. So no holding back. If anything, like I said, if what you're wanting is a committed relationship and you guys have been dealing with each other for a while and they're still not giving you that, it's time you start having that conversation and make it clear that it's not you, that you need them or i should say it's not yeah it's not that you need them it's that you're choosing to want them but if they're not the ones to give you what you're looking for you're okay with walking away from that um and that's going to change not only the dynamic so that you don't keep repeating the cycle but it's also going to change their perspective on you as well sagittarius so Basically, what they're telling you here, Sagittarius, in the nicest way possible is stop being a doormat. All right, my loves. All right. Moving on. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. What's going on with Capricorn and their person? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. By the way, for those of you guys that have ordered uh, personal consultations, I am going to be reaching out to all of you guys uh, in the next two days. So from now uh, to the next two days, I'm going to be reaching out to all of you guys to schedule those new appointments, okay? And if you guys are interested in any personal consultations or any type of personalized spell work, you can find all of that on the description link below or Shopify. Also, we're going to be having restock of our uh, soaps in a spell. So you guys, um, if you guys have been waiting for those, uh, they're going to be basically restocked um, by Halloween. So just keep an eye out for that. All right, let's see what's going on with Cappies, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, them and their person. What's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Okay. All right, here we go, Capricorn. All right, we have the King of Wands. Some some of you guys may be dealing with fire energy. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Some of you guys are trying to take on a masculine energy, whether you're a female or a male, doesn't matter. We're talking about energies. Someone's trying to assert dominions in this connection. That's immediately what's coming to me. Now we have the Judgment card here. And the Page of Wands, Five of Swords, and the Nine of Wands. Okay. You see that? <laughs> Someone's trying to assert their dominance in this connection. Now, I'm going to be honest. Immediately when I seen the King of Wands, I was being shown fire energy, yes. But I'm, it has more to do with, like, ego. It has more to do with, like, pride or you or them struggling there is a struggle that's going on with the the dynamics of power basically exchange of power 
because they're having difficulty letting go of certain things. Could be, um, you know, could be having difficulty letting go of your ego, letting go of your pride. Could be them dealing with difficulty of letting go or letting go of the reins or trusting you enough to lead the relationship or the connection. But I see you guys making an irrational decision. So the advice here, Capricorn, um, is, is, and I feel like it has a lot to do with the full moon's energy right now because it is definitely crisp and it is definitely in the air. With the judgment card, I really want you guys to try the best you can to maintain your emotional, um, your emotions basically, because I feel like right now, you could be triggered where you make an irrational decision that creates more difficulties and more blockages in this connection. And the reason I say that is because I see you guys making a quick decision, but it has, again, to do with pride, with ego, where the advice here with the Five of Swords is, what are you fighting, Capricorn? Or why do you keep choosing like the difficult life? Or why are you choosing to take the difficult route. So what I mean by that is what's coming to mind is a lot of what is unfolding, a lot of what you're being experienced right now in, in this connection or in this relationship has everything to do with something that you need to heal, something you've needed to heal for a very long time. So you're acting based on instinct, based on history, based on what you've experienced in the past, and you're being irrational or you're being quick on making a decision about something because it feels all very too familiar to you. But again, Five of Swords is us fighting or choosing to fight over ego and pride. Basically, we're choosing the route of being petty. And that's what's creating more difficulties, more blockages in this connection. And the reason I say that is because your partner's uh, energy here is the Page of Wands. So I see them wanting to open up or wanting to communicate. If there was no communication, they will be communicating. But again, there is something about you being like over dramatic or overreacting. There is something unstable that's going on with your emotions right now, Capricorn, where you are very confrontational. And instead of make like, Okay, so what's coming to mind is you want a specific outcome in this connection. It's not moving as fastly as as fast as you would want. So then you get triggered and you overreact or you act explosively, maybe even a bit petty or a bit mean. And then you put your partner or the person that you're dealing with in this position where they they wanted a communicator, they wanted to express or maybe open up to you. But now they feel like they have to hold back because Capricorn's a little cuckoo right now or you're acting a little bit, you know, they're not used to that or maybe they feel like you're just too aggressive. So again, it's about asserting dominions. It's it's kind of like the situation where when I deal with the client that is dealing with the partner that has an ego as big as a client, right? It's like, when one tries to get soft, the other starts to get soft too. But the moment that one or the other triggers the other, the walls come up again. So it's 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 like it's like this game that's happening where I feel like it has more to do with with you, Capricorn, having to face certain aspects that you need to heal from. And I feel that this is not to do with this new person or with your person or with the person that you're dealing with right now. This has a lot to do with your history when it comes to relationships and partnerships. So my advice for the remaining of this month, do not overreact. Do not make irrational decisions that may lead you later on to regret because I see this person really struggling, yes, with ego and pride, but they are trying to meet you halfway or they're trying to get, you know, closer to you, maybe try to understand your perspective. But if you start acting like a wild, feral person, right, um, you're just going to bring those walls right back up. So it's kind of like you're contradicting yourself and it's self-sabotage what's coming to mind. So again, uh, my advice, 
try the best you can for the remainder of the month not to overreact. Um, try the best you can to have control. Master your mind, Capricorn. Master what you think about because that's what you bring about. Okay? All right. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus, and their person. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquas. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. All right. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right. As current situation, we have the Queen of Cups. We have the four of cups. We have the five of cups. Oh, uh oh. Ten of wands and the six of pentacles. Okay. Aquarius, right now, I feel like both of you guys are being overly dramatic or overly in your emotions. And you guys are obsessing over your emotions and your feelings or your needs not being met in this relationship instead of opening up and actually talking about it what you guys are doing is kind of suppressing it and just being unhappy together or dealing with each other when you kind of don't want to deal with each other no more and the reason i say that is your feelings and thoughts is the four of cups you are at this point disconnected distant from the connection or the relationship your partner, five of pentacles, they are either uh, emotionally detached from the situation or they're feeling like you've been emotionally detached from the connection. And no matter how hard they're trying to, um, you know, reconnect with you or maybe talk about it, it's like you shut them out or they feel like you're just pushing them away. And at this point, um, I feel like there is a massive need for you guys to be transparent and honest with each other. Um, the advice position here is the 10 of wands. And again, with the four of cups, listen, Aquarius, if you are not emotionally, sexually, mentally, whatever fulfilled in this connection, why string something along when you are already mentally checked out? And the thing about Aquarius is, the moment you're mentally checked out, you're checked out. You know what I mean? Like, rarely is there a comeback to that. So I feel like there was something that could have transpired, something that could have made you bring your guard up or um, feel like you had to emotionally detach from the situation because you didn't want to hurt anymore. But with the Ten of Wands as the advice position is, if you are staying in the relationship because let's say there's children involved or because you gave them or made them a promise or whatever and you're really big on that, whatever the situation is that you feel tied to this situation, if you are unhappy, walk away from this. Walk away from it. And not only walk away from it, but speak your truth. Say your peace, Aquarius. And the reason I say that is because your future actions the outcome here is the six of pentacles and the six of pentacles is coming together and really you know coming together or opening up to being able to understand that even though you guys have been very distant right with each other you guys have been feeling or experiencing the same shit it's just that you guys are not talking about it and i feel like it's crucial, especially because we are going to be going through the transit of Pluto going into your sign, Aquarius. So what does this mean? This means that if it's not working for you at this point in time, my advice, if you really don't want to suffer the Pluto really dragging your ass and teaching you multiple lessons, take it from someone that's experienced Pluto's energy for about 16 years, um, Say your piece. Be honest about it. You know what? I'm not happy. I'm, I'm not being fulfilled. I'm not whatever the situation is. And here's another thing. If you've been holding on because you've been hoping and praying that the situation turns around, it's not. It's not going to turn around. And the reason why it's not going to turn around is because both of you guys are kind of like together to maintain something, whether it's to maintain a connection of the family, whether it's to maintain 
the perfect picture of a relationship and how other people perceive you or whether it's to prove to yourself that you can work it out even though you've been trying for a while and you're over it at this point like do yourself a favor if you're unhappy walk away from this because if you choose yourself and to be honest then you're releasing yourself from any any karma anything that may happen once that transit once pluto finally stations in your sign i hope that makes sense okay and like I said, take it from someone that has has been having <laughs> Pluto in Capricorn for a very long time. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces and their person. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys do celebrate Hallow's Eve, Halloween, you guys comment below and let me know what you guys do. Or if you celebrate it as a family, what is it that you guys do? We're really big on that, and it's usually it usually falls on me. We usually have a Halloween celebration where the family gets together. We all dress up. We all bring tons of... We do a potluck, so everyone cooks different things. Of course, Halloween theme. And it's at good times. All right, let's see. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Pisces and their person. One more shuffle. Thank you. All right, here we go, Pisces. We have the Seven of Wands. You're standing your ground on something. King of Pentacles. King of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, the Three of Pentacles. All right. So what I'm seeing here is you're standing your ground. You've had it, Pisces. And I, I've been saying this. If you guys have been following my TikTok or my Snapchats, this is something I've been saying, right? Pisces has been having Saturn in your sign all this year and some part of next year. It's going to remain there. And Saturn is not an easy planet to deal with, right? And I see a lot of Pisces really going through it right now. It's like the illusions of what they thought their partners were. It's kind of crumbling and just disintegrating. But here's the thing. Saturn is going to teach us like the hard lessons, but it straight. Think of it as like when you have a sword, obviously you have to put it in the fire and you have to beat the shit out of it, right? To make the shape of it. But once it's done, once it's, you know, experience all that beating, um, it becomes a deadly weapon. So what do I mean by that? These lessons that are happening is not coincidental, Pisces. It's something that you need to fully embrace. And the reason is because, oh, you got to know when you need to make it about yourself. You need to know when enough is enough. You need to know limits when it comes to relationships and partnerships. As an example, you've been dealing with a partner that perhaps has been lying to you or being deceitful. You've been feeling this intuition. You've been feeling it. You've been feeling it, but you've been ignoring it, right? And then boom, the universe shows you. And then you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm just not ready to let go. So then you give them another opportunity and then boom, the same thing happens. How many times do you have to go through the same scenario or through the same experience or through the same situation in order for you to realize there's something about you, right, that is attracting this experience? And it comes down to how you view yourself or what you believe yourself to be deserving of. And this is a lesson that Saturn's been trying to teach you. Now, like I said, the quicker you embrace this, the quicker you say, okay, enough is enough. I don't want to deal with the cheating asshole. I don't want to be dealing with half-ass nothing. If they're not all in, I'm walking away. There is power to that because you're telling the universe, I am not going to settle for anything less than what the fuck I want. When you're able to embrace that, what's going to happen is that not only are you going to have plenty, meaning options, right? Right? or high-valued partners, or perhaps a specific partner that you've never dealt with this type of caliber, right? Because think about it, Saturn is definitely a planet that will bring to you the person you marry. 
you know, <laughs> and maybe it's someone that is a high value that maybe you're not accustomed to. Maybe you're accustomed to dealing with bumps, with people that, you know, just coast through life, that have no goals, no aspirations. Maybe you're the one that often finds yourself trying to encourage them. Maybe you're the one that often finds yourself trying to help them. Maybe you're the one that finds yourself taking care of them, you know? So whatever the theme that you're going through right now, Pisces, just know there's an elevation that's happening here, but you have to acknowledge those lessons. How you're viewing the situation is the king of pentacles, Saturn energy, Capricorn energy. But it can also represent dealing with a earth energy, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn energy here. You're wanting something stable. You're wanting something that is going to be long lasting. What is your partner thinking and feeling? Seven of swords. There's sneaky behavior. They're not being completely honest or transparent. They're probably acting single. Um, and it's something you've been sensing or feeling, but at this point, something, there's going to be a culmination happening in the end of this month where you're going to realize, you know what, the next best course of action is for me to give myself some time or to choose myself to embrace being single because I'd rather be single than be in a relationship where that person often makes me feel like I'm alone because then what's the fucking point of being in that relationship? Do you get what I'm saying? The moment you're able to embrace this Pisces is the moment that you're going to be, the universe is going to be drawing to you, bringing to you. Even I'm being shown like even people, like the universe even bringing people to your door. All right. Knocking on your door. And these are high valued people. These are people that are meant to be in your life or that could potentially be your lifetime partner. <clears throat> But you have to know your limits. So if you've been dealing with the situation where there's been cheating, there's been lies, there's been deceit, and you keep putting up with it, Pisces, I assure you by the end of this year, by the end of this year, don't matter how long you've been married to that person, if this is the fuckery you've been dealing with, by the end of this year, there is some culmination that's going to happen. Now, what I'm seeing is at the end of this month, you're choosing yourself. You're choosing your sanity or your peace of mind, or you're choosing to give the opportunity to someone that is willing to put in the work and the effort to actually, to actually have an opportunity with you. And I feel like the moment you start to deal with this person that's coming in, you're going to realize how much you've been missing out and how little you've been settling with. All right, my loves. All right. Yes, that was heavy. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Aries. Aries, I hope you guys are in control of your emotions this full moon. Uh, had some of you guys running around like a, like a chicken with no head. <laughs> I deal with a lot of Aries people in my life, and uh, yeah, y'all were kind of aggressive, you know? Aggressive, not in a negative way, but controlling your emotions. Um, it was funny to see, actually, because I have a lot of people in my life that I deal with that are Aries, and it was like, it was like y'all were just having a moment, you know? A moment of like, just telling people, like basically telling people off. It was funny. So I hope you guys are surviving this. <laughs> I hope that you weren't as aggressive. Let's see what's going on in your love life, Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries and their person. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Thank you. All right, here you go, Aries. All right, we have the King of Swords. You're deliberating. You're thinking. You're in your head. Wow interesting very interesting you see that you guys we got two kings and an emperor okay so i feel like you're very much in your head aries about this connection i feel like you are deliberating something meaning you're trying to make up your mind about something in regards to this connection 
you're fully in your energy here with how you're feeling and how you're seeing things. I feel like you guys are beginning to see things more clearly, Aries. Or you're paying attention, like you're actually paying attention to the universe and to the signs that the universe is bringing to you. Uh, whereas in the past, perhaps you could have been holding off or more guarded. I feel like there's no denying right now because you are in your full power, Aries. It's like you're seeing things from a very clear perspective. You are making your mind up about what you want regarding this connection and you will execute moving forward. Um, but I do see you guys, like it's taking you a bit or it's taking you a while to really tune in to this connection. Now, you the thoughts the thoughts of the other person and their feelings is the king of cups so there is definitely interest and love here being reciprocated the fact that it's two kings and an emperor speaks to me about whether you're a male or female both of you guys are extremely masculine or dealing with someone that is very much in their masculine energy. I see them getting softer and I see that's where you start to really analyze the connection or the way the connection happened. Uh, maybe you guys have a lot of history here. Maybe there has been things where there hasn't been much clarity in regards to this connection, but I see that moving forward. You're seeing things from a different perspective. Why? Because this person is, maybe you've been dealing with someone that was extremely guarded. Or maybe this person was like really difficult for you to read, Aries. Um, and you felt like maybe they weren't being truthful. Maybe you were standing in your power because you felt like you didn't want to be taken advantage of. Or maybe you felt like you didn't want to fully open up because what if they didn't want that? Do you get what I'm saying? It's it's almost like it's almost like both of you guys have a lot of feelings and a lot of connection. Like this connection is really strong. But I feel like your traumas are playing a big ass role in this connection. But I feel that by the end of this month, you guys are going to definitely be getting much more clarity to this connection or you're making it official or for others of you um you're really deciding this is who i want and this is what i want and you're going to go in all in i feel the moment you do that is the moment that this person's walls are definitely going to come down and you're really gonna see how much they care for you aries i'm gonna be honest i feel like aries um Aries, Libra, Leo have been experiencing like a theme when it comes to love. Um, and for Aries, I've been seeing, I feel like the past readings has a lot to do with like pride or ego or past traumas. Keeping in mind that Chiron has been in your sign, Aries. So whether you're aware of it or not, it's almost like the universe is really forcing you to it's forcing you to accept, yes, um, I've been hurt in this aspect and I need to heal that because that's what's preventing me from ex fully experiencing feeling comfortable enough to be vulnerable or feeling comfortable enough to open up. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that every uh, beginning of the year, I always do the yearly predictions. And for Aries, that was one of the predictions that you guys were going to be tested in the sense of vulnerability, uh, whether it is to learn how to decipher when that's okay, or for others of you, just in general, how to be vulnerable. It's like you guys have this defense mechanism that the moment you start to bring your walls down because you're trying to let someone in, any uncertainty that makes you feel some type of way, your defenses come back up. And it's like this tug of war that's happening. But it's not even with the outside. It has more to do with the inside of you, Aries. It's like you're having, I mean, the simple fact that we have the emperor and the king of swords. The emperor is much more wiser. It is, 
obviously the the emperor overpowers any king, right? Um, but the emperor has been through war. That's the reason why he gets his wisdom because he's been to war. He's experienced life. He's older. He's much more wiser. So the question here, Aries, is are you letting the experiences that you've dealt with in the past become a part of your wisdom or have you allowed them to consume you so much that it keeps you, that your past or your past experiences keep you from fully experiencing true love and connection? Do you get what I'm saying? So again, what I'm seeing for you guys is I feel like there is a revelation that's happening this month where you're becoming assertive, you're stepping into your power and you're like, this is what the fuck I want. And you're being unapologetic about it. And you're rushing in towards that connection. The moment, and I'm gonna be honest with the King of Cups here, I feel like this person has very strong feelings for you, but they've been holding back. And the reason why they've been holding back is because they're scared of being hurt. So you probably were dealing or have been dealing with someone that perhaps has past traumas as well you know that they don't allow themselves to fully open up unless you meet them halfway and I feel like they feel you haven't done that so that could be the reasoning why it kind of feels like it's been up in the air however the future action here is the queen of wands be decisive take action and it's okay to be in the feminine energy it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay sometimes it's necessary the outcome, six of cups, happiness, fulfillment, reciprocation. So Aries, whatever's triggering you right now, just remember, tell yourself your past does not make you. You are not your past. Let the past be lessons that you learn from and to help you be more dessert, uh, to help you or to teach you be more uh, discerning when it comes to what you allow and what you don't allow, but also don't it, don't let it be don't let it be your past what keeps you from fully experiencing happiness or perhaps the happiness you've never experienced. All right, all right. Moving on here, let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Taurus out there. Taurus and their person. Let's see what's going on. All right, here we go, Taurus. We're starting off here with the Emperor. Structure. You're wanting structure. You're wanting stability. You want to know where the fuck this is going. <laughs> King of Swords. For some of you, Taurus, you may be dealing with an Aries. Oh, wow. Very interesting here. All right. Let's see. Ooh. All right. So we're starting off here with the Emperor card. So Taurus, you guys are really going into, or I should say, finishing the month, knowing exactly what it is that you want in regards to this connection or in regards to when it comes to partnerships and relationships. How you're feeling about the situation, you have the King of Swords. So I see you guys very much in your head right now and it has more to do with the fact that you're wanting to you're wanting to see if this person is going to be decisive or if they're going to be taking action towards you or letting you know it's like hello give me a sign i want to know where this is going type of energy how your person is viewing the situation the empress they're realizing taurus is who i want we have emperor and the empress here so for some of you guys This is a soulmate connection for some. Now, what I'm hearing is for those of you guys that are single out there, you're not going to be single very long. And I see this connection happening more towards the middle of November, but the countdown starts now. So for some of you guys, time is fluid. Just keep that in mind. But I do see a, a new connection that is coming in for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single or have been single for quite a while. And this is a person that is much more mature. So... What's coming to mind is it could be someone that is five years older than you. Now, for others of you, if you are, um, yeah, so 
I'm seeing someone that is five years older than you. If you guys fall in the bracket between 45 to 50 years old, you could be dealing with someone that is five years younger than you, okay? Um, and this is a new person that comes in. And like I said, I see it from now all the way to the middle of November is what they're telling me. Now, when we talk about when we talk about this connection, if you guys are currently dealing with someone, um, I feel like there is a renovation of this connection. So for some of you guys, it could be that you are taking a leap of faith and having an open conversation about what it is that you want. For some of you guys, there's commitment that's going to be brought up or you're having the conversation about commitment, um, marriage. Um, but I also see, because the thing is we have two pairings. We have the king and the emperor, I mean, the emperor and the empress, and we have the couple of swords, king and queen. So I feel for some of you guys, there is a revelation that is going to be unfolding where this is so odd, you guys. Okay, this is not going to connect with everyone, but if you sometime from now to November, if your mom or your dad tells you, I have someone that I feel would be perfect for you, you should meet them, go with it, because I feel like this connection is going to be your soulmate connection. And it's coming through from your mother figure or your father figure that brings this person into the picture. And it's going to be very spontaneous the way it happens. So first of all, that's one message. Now, the other message that I'm seeing here is I am seeing a connection that is coming through. Um, so if you're a Taurus and you're dealing with an Aries or you're dealing with a Gemini, a Libra, or an Aquarius, or any of these signs you've dealt with in the past, meaning you're trying to find love, but there is a person from your past that could have been potentially an air sign or something like that. There has been still a spiritual connection linked there between you and this person from your past that has influenced you in the past, but that's no longer going to be the issue. And the reason I say that is because we are experiencing um, with the Venus transit that's going to be coming up or we're already in it. Um, what they're showing me is almost like a, a jumping of timelines where you should have jumped that timeline a while ago, but because there was emotional connections or attachments still there, it made it really difficult for you. However, I see that link breaking and I see you going on to the next chapter of your life, freeing yourself from this past energy that has influenced or that has been influencing your love life. So if you're a Taurus and you've been single for a very long time and the last time that you were in a partnership was with an ex, right? And since then you haven't dated, you haven't the reason for it is because there is still an emotional attachment there. There's still a spiritual connection there, but that's being broken. Um, and I see you being able to free yourself or jump that timeline. And when you do that, that's when, and, and again, like I said, it's not like you're aware of it or you're proactively doing that. I feel like this is something that the universe is bringing to you and it's making happen for you. Uh, and it can happen as quickly as meeting this person within a week. All right. So I know this reading kind of seemed all over the place. It was messages for different ones, but I hope it resonates. Comment below and let me know, uh, Taurus, because now I'm now I'm interested how that plays out for you guys. All right. All right. Moving on. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini and their person. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. All right, here we go, Gemini. Let's see what's going on. All right. Hmm. Gemini, I see you being done with, like, games or petty games. 
I feel you guys are ending a cycle of being okay or pretending to be okay with entertaining instability. And I see you guys walking into your power and you are deliberately letting them know this is a line the the like you're basically marking your line on the sand and like this is the line you do not cross it and if you cross it that's it we're not gonna keep doing this anymore and I feel like they're going to test you um but I feel like in that testing they're doing you kind of a solid they're doing you a favor and they're showing you that this is definitely time for you to know your worth Gemini and know that you deserve to be treated right you're not too much you're not difficult to deal with it's just the person you're with makes you feel that way because that's not the right person you should be with do you get what I'm saying the reason I say this is with the knight of wands you're taking action towards something that you've been holding off for quite a while could be because of reservations could be because I don't want to move on I what if this person does decide to change whatever um but you're taking a leap of faith and you're moving forward in action, whether they're giving you or providing the stability for you or not. Uh, with the Queen of Pentacles in regards to how this person views you or how they see how they're feeling, Queen of Pentacles does indicate getting to the point of seeing you as something that has potential for long term and longevity, but only if you show them that you're not going to be putting up with their fuckery, Gemini. So again, there's something about this connection where it's been a bit flighty. Maybe it just hasn't been stable. Maybe it, you guys still don't have a label and you've been dealing with each other for a while. But I, what I highly encourage you guys to do is to really stand your ground uh, for the remainder of this month because in doing so, this person is going to see that you do have standards. And it's not to say you don't, Gemini, but I feel like this person... I don't know. I don't know what you've done in the past that has made them feel like they can walk all over you, like you can be a doormat. And we know Geminis are definitely not doormats. So again, there is something about standing your ground and knowing that it's okay to speak up and say, you know what, this is a fucking boundary that I do not allow you to cross. And the moment you do, like I'm walking away, that's it. Um, but you have to be aggressive in that decision meaning if you decide okay i'm gonna have this conversation and i'm gonna let my partner know uh or my person know like i'm not okay with this and the moment you do like i'm gonna walk away own it meaning if they do it don't take them back do you get what i'm saying like what they're telling you is i'm gonna be honest what they're telling you is that you have to have boundaries gemini if you want things to start to change for you in regards to love and romance, you need to learn to have boundaries. Uh, I don't know if it's, you know, when you love enough or not enough, when you love completely, you give yourself completely and you kind of overlook or surpass their flaws and that's okay. But if surpassing their flaws means that they're constantly hurting you or constantly making you feel like they don't, they don't take you under consideration then there's a problem there and that's what they're telling you you have to have boundaries you have to teach them that you're going to stand behind your word when you say something you're going to do it uh, and not just say it because it almost feels like a game to me uh, it almost feels like oh I can push Gemini's you know boundaries and I can keep pushing and pushing and pushing and see how far I can go you never put up a no or you never put up a wall they're going to push you to the point of pushing you off the fucking cliff. You get what I'm saying? So what they're telling you is boundaries is very, very important. And only through this are you going to be able to bring some type of stability in this connection. All right, my loves. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancers. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Cancer and their person. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Ten of Swords. 
could have been dealing with earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. All right, so what I'm seeing here, uh, Cancer, is there is an ending cycle. Uh, for some of you guys, there could have been a recent breakup, a recent separation. I feel like you're still hoping or you're still wanting to bring some type of stability to this connection. But I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like the unit, whatever's happening right now in your love life, okay? This is in general for everyone. Whatever's happening in your love life, whatever difficulties or struggles you're currently going through, cancer. It's necessary because you're bringing an end and a culmination to some type of ending, some type of ending of a cycle. Um, and obviously you're a cardinal sign, which, you know, with the Pluto's energy um, and with the full moon in Aries, uh, you're ending a cycle of uncertainty when it comes to love and romance. And so that's the reason why they're saying whatever struggles you're currently going through, they're necessary. It's the universe preparing you to receive or to experience the connection you've always wanted. Now, in regards to your person, how they're viewing or feeling the two of swords, they're emotionally detached or they are not emotionally available right now. They're not, it's like they're being stuck or stubborn about something. For some of you guys, it could be that they're being stubborn about giving these or this relationship another go. Um, they don't see. They don't see. They don't see or they don't hear you. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're experiencing like being very frustrated. Um, there could have been some type of breakup because of a misunderstanding. You're trying to speak your truth. You're trying to explain something and they're just not wanting to hear it. If this is the case for you, Cancer, do not try to force it. Do not try to chase them. Do not go showing up to their house. Do not go looking for them. Do not go blowing up their phone. The reason I say this is because they're telling you time is running on the universe's time. Do you get what I'm saying? So even if you try to force something, even if you're trying to push it, even if you're trying to make things happen or move as quickly as you would. It doesn't matter what you do, honestly, right now. The universe is playing out circumstances and situations that are going to lead you to your happily ever after, but you have to trust the process. You have to. Sometimes the best thing we can do is get out of our own fucking way and not do anything. Take it as the universe telling you, Cancer, um get out of my way so that I can bring to you what you want as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Do you get what I'm saying? So even if there is a breakup or there is a separation, I see a reconciliation happening. Even if you are at the, you know, at the cusp of a breakup and you feel very intensely the need to pull on them or to hold on to them for dear, don't do that, cancer. Don't do that. Because what the universe is telling you is get out of your own way so that I can give you what you want. So I can bring to you what it is that you want when it comes to relationship and a partnership. You got to just chill the fuck out, cancer, is what they're telling you. <laughs> um, and the reason for this is, again, like I said, when it comes to your partner, how they're feeling or how they're seeing the situation, two of swords indicates they're trying to find the clarity within themselves. That means they're shutting out the whole world. So they're not going to hear you. They're not going to listen to you. They're trying to internalize. Let them. Let them do that. It's kind of like let them find themselves so that they can come and find you. All right? All right, Cancer. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Leo when it comes to love and romance. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, Leo and their person. Let's see what's going on with Leo. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. If you guys are interested in any personal consultations or any type of spell work, any of our journals or manifestation or shadow book, 
or any of our soap lines, you can find all of that on our links below. All right, let's see what's going on with Leo. All right, Leo, we have the Eight of Swords. You guys are very much in your head right now. A lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. I feel like you guys are stressing the fuck out because you don't know whether you want this connection, whether you want this relationship, whether you want to work it out or whether you want to give up. All right, so what I'm seeing here is a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress on both sides. I feel like for some of you guys, you could be feeling very restless, very stressed, very... I feel like you guys are thinking of everyone else other than yourself. And when I mean everyone else, it's like the expectations of others uh, in regards to this connection or this relationship. Especially because we have the hanged man here in the position of your feelings and thoughts. And this is indicative to me that you are trying to see things from a different perspective to make an excuse for the same fucking behavior. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like you're trying to convince yourself this and this and this is happening and that's the reason why my partner is acting this way or that's the reason why my partner is being this way. But it's like those are just excuses because you know that you're either over it Or you both feel like there's some type of disappointment. Now I'm getting to different scenarios. For some of you guys, it is a situation where you're stressed and you're willing to sacrifice yourself because your partner could have walked away from you or there could have been an ending or some type of conclusion, some type of breakup or separation. And it's like you really wanting to excuse however the ending happened so for some of you guys it could be that they walked away for others they ghosted you for others they just clearly came out in the open and broke up with you and you have no idea why the fuck they did that right but you're still willing to surpass that and you're like hoping or wanting for them to reach out however what the universe is telling you is leo whatever is unfolding right now whatever endings are happening it's because those endings need to happen. You need to walk away from this situation in order to restore your balance, in order to restore your, you know, the balancing of scales. For some of you guys, this could have been a karmatic situation that you've been dealing with or that have been dealing with or that the past six months, right, since eclipse season happened, could have been a karmic cycle. So you could have been dealing with a person from a past. There could have been some type of, you know, uh, reigniting the flame of an old love or something like that. But you guys are quickly coming to the realization that you guys are too different. And that, that you guys are too different or that you're coming to the realization that you both are not willing to change enough to make the relationship work and I feel like at the end of the month there is going to be a decision to be made and for some of you guys you're walking away from this situation I feel like you guys are highly feeling like this relationship or this connection has brought a lot of imbalance in your life for some of you guys if you were dealing with someone new it's almost like they consumed you so much you were stressing about it there's like a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety attachment to this connection where they constantly made you feel like you were not sure of them or like they made you insecure about them that there was anxious attachment to this connection and it like literally consumed you to the point where you weren't focused at work you weren't doing what you were supposed to do because like this was all encompassing your whole fucking life and you're realizing at this point not worth it or you're realizing at this point I can't go on like this and you're choosing to restore that balance you're choosing to walk away all right Leo wish you guys the best my loves all right moving on 
Let's see what's going on with Virgo. Oh, last but not least, right? Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Virgos and their love life. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo and their person. Let's see what's going on. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Here we go. All right, Virgo, let's see what's going on with you guys. We have the Hanged Man here, Pisces Energy. We have the Four of Swords, the Eight of Wands. Very interesting, you guys. Super, super interesting here. Okay. So, especially because they've seen the Six of Cups at the bottom. Okay. So, what I'm seeing here with the Hanged Man, this is Piscean Energy, right? And what they're showing me is almost like you're starting to see this connection, Virgo, or you're starting to see your partner from a different lens, from a different perspective. And you're realizing, you know what? At this point, I'm not going to meet you halfway no more. Either you meet me all the way through or I'm done. And the reason for this is because you've given so much of you or you've given so much to this relationship that you're willing to walk away, Virgo. And for some of you guys, you already did. Or for others of you, you were like, I'm done. You're not dealing with this no more. And the reason for this is because whether you're aware of it on a conscious level or on a subconscious level, you're realizing that your peace of mind is very important at this point in your life. You don't want chaos. You don't want dysfunction. And you don't want to keep playing the guessing game. I feel that by you doing this, that's if you're not, that's if you haven't already done that, you will be deciding to walk away or deciding to call it quits or deciding to do your own thing. And the moment you do that, Virgo, this person is all in. And this person is all in. Why? Because they're realizing I don't want to let go of Virgo. They are too high valued. They are worth too much to me. I am emotionally invested even though I pretended like I wasn't emotionally invested. I pretended that I was okay with like no labels or being free or whatever. But I'm not. And now I'm scared as shit that Virgo is going to go somewhere else because they are high valued. They are realizing your worth because you are realizing your worth, Virgo. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see the theme here? It's almost like in the past, you've had this idea of relationships where you often find yourself doing or sacrificing too much. But then one day you woke up and you had clarity. And the clarity was, you know what? I am no longer going to sacrifice myself. If anything, I'm going to start to see things from a different perspective. And the perspective is either they choose me or I'm out. That's when they come in hot and heavy. That's when they're wanting a new beginning with you. Because they don't want you single. Because they know your worth. Because you know it. So I'm going to be honest. I feel like for some of you Virgos, you've been dealing with a situation maybe where it's been literally a situationship. For others of you, maybe it's been no, no, like no title. Uh, for others of you, maybe it was that they just didn't really tell you where this was headed. And you got tired of that bullshit. And you're choosing to... Pull away and detach from the situation because you just don't want to be mentally fucked no more. Or you're not want, like you're over the games basically. And the moment you start to realize that and you're like, I'm over it and you walk away. It's like your value goes so much high because they're realizing I can substitute Virgo. I can't find another Virgo. I can't be okay that I am emotionally invested in them even though I pretended like I haven't but like oh my god Virgo is single now like what does that mean they have options they're not liking that one bit 
So Virgo, if you're experiencing a bit of anxiety in regards to this connection or there's no connection or not connection, there's no communication right now, they will be communicating with you, my loves. They will be coming back around and they're coming in hot and heavy. Why? Because they don't want no one else to come and scoop you up. But it starts with valuing yourself, Virgo. So if they're mistreating you, walk the fuck away from that. Watch how quickly they change. All right, my loves, I hope that this was giving you guys clarity and insight. I want to wish you all a beautiful full moon, safe full moon. And I will see you guys soon. You guys definitely stay tuned. I will be uploading on Saturday a spell as this is coming up on Friday. So the next day I will be uploading a spell video for you guys. And uh, yeah, you guys stay tuned for more readings as well as more spell videos as as well as more episodes on the podcast. So I wish you guys the very best. So then bye for now and happy Halloween.